Hi, this is Chris from iSolutions, and in this video, I'm going to show you a quick demonstration of a database or some features that we added to our client's database for them that use FileMaker, HTML5, JavaScript, and CSS. First, a little bit of background. Just wanted to show you this database here that I have on screen. This is the database that the client created, and they had been using this to manage fundraising events. So every time that they have a new fundraising event, uh, in this case, the client is MIT, and they have a lot of fundraisers. So what they do is uh, they, the fundraising staff uh, gets a database created for them. So for every event, they have a database created. And here's an example of one that you see here. They load all the different uh, guests into the database. So one record equals one person invited to an event. And then as these people RSVP, they um, either change the RSVP response field to accepted or declined. So ultimately what they wanted us to do is build on some additional functionality to their existing database that will allow them to create rooms for these events because these fundraising events can happen at different uh, locations on campus or even off campus. And they wanted to be able to build out the custom room so it looks just like a seating design or a seat map of that event and then be able to you know, pull people in from their database and drop them onto seats and thus ultimately populate the seat number and table number for that guest and they want to be able to do that dynamically and still have access to a lot of metadata for example things like food restrictions or special needs or event specific notes um, or different information about the guest uh, that might be relevant to some of the decisions that they're making when they're doing the seating operations. So what we built for them was a uh, FileMaker HTML5 JavaScript and CSS based uh, seating map. So if I hit this button here, we added this to their existing database, and up pops a window on screen. And this window is just a FileMaker window, just a new window. Pops up a FileMaker database, and what you're seeing on screen here is a web viewer. And uh, this is a web viewer that points to a FileMaker field. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at what's going on in the background here. And you'll see what we've got is a web viewer here. If I double click on this, you'll notice that the web viewer goes to a field that's called Cedar HTML Calc. Just like in some of the other videos that you may have seen on our site, we're using the same technique here. So in this file, or in this table here, we've got a HTML, or a calculation that outputs HTML. So really all that you're seeing inside the web viewer is a very sophisticated HTML application that uh, uses JavaScript and CSS libraries, all sorts of different libraries actually, and then data from within the database itself to, to display what you're seeing, what you're going to see in a second here in the demo. So here's the calculation, and the calculation references uh, a series of different JavaScript and CSS files, and you'll see that when we open up the file, we load all the contents uh, from a setup database that we created uh, into application memory, and there's a preview of it there. So we've got this other file that's called the setup file that we created. And the setup file has various different roles. One of those roles is to store all the different JavaScript and CSS files used within the framework that we're using for this application. You see there's no shortage. All of these here are global fields that contain individual CSS or JavaScript documents. And all of those are referenced within the calculation field that we ultimately show inside this web viewer. So back to the functionality. So here's a little preview, by the way. This is what the output of the calculation looks like. It just gives tons and tons of data and references all the different documents that you saw a moment ago. And we go back into browse mode what you're going to see is what we call a seat map. And there's various different types of functionality here. The first thing that you'll notice is you're already seeing a room that's been built. One of the key roles of this uh, application that we created is the ability for users to take a blank slate and to create a room. Here we have examples of two rooms that were, already, that were created using our tool. And the interesting thing about it is these configurations can be saved into that setup database that I showed you. So that way events that are created in the future can use the same exact room and table and chair configuration and even some of these obstacles that you see here. 
But if they wanted to start from scratch, what they would do is invoke this little tool window that we've got, and they would go into one of two modes. We either have a setup mode or a seat mode. And in setup mode, they can create a new room if they'd like to. You see here under Room Builder, they can use a room from a library. And what that is is a library of different rooms that have been created uh, and stored inside our setup database. And here you see a room that's called Alter Regis. It's the same room that we used here, but we already added some tables. But just showing you how we create this from scratch, you'll see that we've got nothing in the room. This happens to be a SVG outline from a CAD drawing that we were provided by our client over at MIT, and it represents a room in one of the MIT campus buildings. So I can use my, my room builder to pull in a room from the library, and that's just a record stored in a database somewhere. Or I can uh, create a new room from scratch if I'd like. And what I can do is uh, build some objects if I'd like to. Like, for example, uh, I can build a uh, stage, for example, and uh, give it a different color. Let's say we'll just give it that color there and build it. And what it does is allows me to place that anywhere on this area. So there's a little stage. Let's say the stage goes in the middle. And if I want, if I think I might use a stage that looks like that same size, I can save it to my library. So by simply hitting save, it'll show up in my object library la later. Or I can move this thing around because we're in setup mode. And setup mode is a lot like, it's basically like layout mode in FileMaker. So here's my stage. And then um, if I want to build some tables, here's a, uh, my screen clears to allow me to build a table. And if I want to go in here and I say round table and, uh, well, let's say rectangular, rectangular table based on the 8 by 30, I'm going to do three seats on the top, three seats on the bottom, and one on each end. And I'll call this uh, 833 by 1 or something like that. And what I'll do is I'll build it and then draw it here. So I can see what that's going to look like. And if I want, I'll go ahead and I'll save it to my table library. And what that's doing is saving all these configurations to our setup data, sorry, to our setup table. But back to my event setup, uh, down here in the event setup, I can look into my existing table library and I can find all sorts of the different uh, tables that were already created and saved if I'd like to. There's the one that I created earlier. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to drop one of those tables here. Um, I could even group grid a bunch of tables. Uh, so for example, here I've just got a seat, uh, two by two, go ahead and hit seat, and then I'll draw that here. And what this allows me to do is create a grid. So I've created a two by two grid of just seats without chairs. And this is something that I could use, let's say, if I want to uh, create a row of the different chairs. If I want to remove things, I can just select them on screen. You see them selected much like in FileMaker because they get handles on them. And um, I can just delete them at will. So uh, for the group grid, let's say I want to do two by five, pick the seat, drop it right there. And you'll see it can build. Uh, you know, uh, different rows of, of seats. And I can just change that by doing the, the uh, adjusting the space in between. I can hit my undo and replace those if I'd like. Here I'll go on and I'll add various different types of chairs. There's a chair with a back on it. I'll go with some of these tables, add that table right there, this table right here. And in addition to tables, I've also got what we call objects. Inside the object library, I can go in and here we've stored things like uh, the stage, or let's say I want to draw plants in the corner. This will indicate where um, you know different plants are in the room. Or I can uh, drop things that might be obstacles, or there might be a you know a podium or something like that, or any kind of different things that I can add on screen. So over here are examples of rooms that have already been set up using these same tools. Here is uh, not only a room that's been set up using these tools, but um, if we leave setup mode and go into seating mode, which in FileMaker languages like browse mode, what it allows us to do is actually work with some of the data. So here I have a, um, a list of all the different guests that have been invited to this event. 
and uh, you'll notice here um, we've got a couple of guests here on this list and if I close our window and I go into let's say this one this first one and I instead choose declined and commit that record now when I go into the seat map you'll when I invoke the setup you'll see that that person is no longer at the top of the list but for those that are on the list I can click their names and then I can you'll see on my cursor I have a plus sign there I can choose which seat I want to drop them into and I can click another name drop them into that seat and if I'm curious to see who's seated in any one of these seats I can just click on it and up pops the name of the person and some icons that represent some of the important things like food restrictions or special needs uh, these are things that are going to help the users make uh, different seating decisions this is even uh, completely resizable so if I have large monitors or if I want to project this onto a screen I can do so by just resizing and you'll notice that uh, I also have things like filters when I click on a filter, if I want to see all the folks with food restrictions, it not only shows me the individuals highlighted here in orange that have food restrictions that have been seated, but also highlighted in orange the individuals that are um, yet to be seated. I can also toggle the pick list, we call it, to show both a combination of individuals who have been seated, they're in gray, or who have not yet been seated, they're in black, or just all the individuals who have been seated. And that way, if you look at someone who's been seated and you click on their name, you can see where they show up here it highlights this seat and shows me that Paul Cook um, is seated over here and if I want to find somebody else like Carol Wobson um, I just click her name and I see that she highlights there so what this allows the users to do is to um, build a room and to then have anybody they want come in and seat the room it's all driven by FileMaker data FileMaker data drives all the different names that you see in the pick list FileMaker data stores all the information that's stored inside the setup in the libraries for the object builders and whatnot. And um, what we're doing in the background is just creating a whole bunch of different layouts or a whole bunch of different calculations that um, we wrap inside JSON format, which is a uh, JavaScript specific type of format. So here's some SVG that you'll notice and uh, different objects. Like for example, here's a table that's stored in our database with the name of it and some of the different dimensions and the color and all we do is we just wrap it in that particular format and we can pull it into uh, HTML into what the user is seeing and allow them this type of functionality. So again another example of uh, FileMaker uh, integrating HTML5, JavaScript and CSS into web viewers allowing uh, extended functionality that you simply cannot do inside of the uh, FileMaker layout tools alone, uh, using FileMaker layout tools alone, uh, but in this case we're using this uh, very compelling technology to provide users uh, the ability to create things not only on the desktop, but in this case we chose uh, libraries that work on the iPad as well so that they can uh, interact with their FileMaker data and ultimately write the tables and seat numbers of all the different guests that they've invited to their database all using um, in this case uh, communicating back from the web viewer back to the FileMaker database so I appreciate you watching this um, thanks we're really excited about this technology and uh